hi guys so um this video is just going to go over um my labor and delivery and everything like that um i am currently two weeks um postpartum um i had my baby um i will show you him in a little bit um, and tell you his name and everything like that but let me catch you up to speed so um Basically, baby was not coming out. Um, he did not want to leave my comfy womb. And so my doctor and I ended up deciding to set an induction um, for uh, 41 weeks um, and to get the baby out just because they worry if you go much past 41 weeks um, because it could be um, a health risk to the baby. The placenta starts to deteriorate after a while. Um, and we just wanted to make sure he was safe and that I was healthy as well. So we set induction for, um, like I said, 41 weeks. We ended up setting um, an induction time of 9 p.m. at night. Um, my doctor was thinking she would have me come in at night um, and they would... Uh, put something to start to ripen my cervix and get me more dilated and that would happen overnight and then they would start Pitocin um, in the morning and hopefully I would have him you know midday um, the next day. So um, Anthony started his two weeks on the day of my induction even though I didn't go in until 9 p.m. at night we just kind of wanted to take that last day of just him and I and so we just got everything you know wrapped up around the house um, we finished up things for our taxes because we still needed to do them um, I cleaned a little bit um, we slept in one final time um, and we ended up going out to dinner. My doctor told me to eat a big meal because I wouldn't be able to eat um, during my uh, labor and we weren't sure how long that was gonna be. Um, and so my uh, Anthony said, well, where do you wanna go? And I said, well, I wanna go somewhere where there's a ton of food. And so uh, the first place I thought of was Olive Garden because they have the unlimited uh, breadsticks and salad. Um, so we ended up going to Olive Garden, having one last meal of just the two of us because um, it'll probably be a while before we can go out uh, to the restaurant uh, again. <laughs> In the future, we'll need a babysitter. We just um, enjoyed one last day of just him and I. Um, the whole day, I was a bundle of nerves just knowing like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to be in pain soon, labor's going to start soon, and like I had never gone through that process before, so I wasn't sure what to expect, um, so I was freaking out, very nervous. I was so happy to have Anthony with me because he, um, you know, he's so calm and cool and collected all the time, and so he was able to keep me you know, all my emotions in check and things like that. Yeah, we just had a really nice day of just the two of us and it was kind of sad um, knowing like it'll never just be the two of us again, though there will always be a, you know, a child with us now. Um, but we were excited to, you know, for what was to come. So um, 9 p.m. rolled around, uh, we packed our bags. I had the hospital bag ready. Um, we brought a couple pillows uh, just because I wasn't sure how the setup was going to be at the hospital and we headed to the hospital. Um, we went and um, we went to labor and delivery and um, they checked me in and I had a really nice big room. I'll show you a picture um, here. So it was really huge, really nice. Um, and they started me up and hooked me up to an IV and started me on fluids um, and they checked me and they found that I was actually three centimeters dilated. I believe I was still 80% effaced at this point, but it was a shock that I was three centimeters because we all thought I would still only be at one centimeter. So um, with once they knew that, um, they called my doctor to see what the plan was and my doctor decided um, to not do like anything to ripen my cervix since I was already at three centimeters and they just decided to start me on Pitocin 
right away. So that was scary and crazy to think. Um, they put like the monitors on me um, and you know went to uh, monitor baby's heart rate and then went to monitor my contractions and they told me that I had been having contractions because um, they were showing up on the screen but I was not feeling any of them. Um, in the past I've like very rarely I felt like my stomach tightening a little bit but it would just be like once every in a great while it was never like things I could time and yeah I would get cramps here and there but never anything that would last very long so I was shocked to find out I was three centimeters dilated having contractions and wasn't even feeling it so they started me on Pitocin um, and we kind of just settled in for the night um, Anthony they had a bed for Anthony to sleep on it was like a couch that pulled out to a bed um, and my mom came in and she was there with us and she stayed with us the whole night um, and the whole time I was just super nervous super worried um, about um, you know when am I gonna start feeling the pain I don't feel pain yet but I feel like I should be feeling pain and so I was freaking out about it you know like crazy um, they had me they had so much fluids going through me that I constantly had to go to the bathroom which was annoying because I was hooked up to the IV uh, you know the pole and so I had to like drag that every time I was wearing the gown and so like it was opening up in the back it was just a mess and then of course they were coming in every you know five minutes to check me see how I was doing um, and so um, that night I uh, progressed and I really didn't start feeling labor pains until I was, I want to say about like four and a half centimeters. Um, and then I started feeling it and it wasn't like a tightening in my belly area. It was more of a tightening more in like my pelvic region. Um, and I, they gave me the option from the very beginning to to get on the epidural. They said I could have it whenever I wanted. And originally I was like, yes, give me it as soon as possible. But going into that, I really just, I've never been pregnant before. I never had labor pains before. I wanted to just be able to feel uh, for once just what it would be like to have contractions. I just wanted to know what they felt like and then I would get the epidural. So I definitely know what they feel like now and uh, very quickly they got painful. So uh, at the beginning it was just like a mild pain and I was like, yeah, I could deal with that. And then very quickly it escalated to, okay, wow, I cannot handle this anymore. Um, so I was so nervous. I was like, yeah, I'm feeling pain, but I don't want to, um, you know, be a wuss. I don't ask for the epidural when, you know, I could keep going. I was having such conflicting thoughts about it. And finally, my mom was like, Shannon, like, just get it. You'll be so happy about it. You won't have to worry about it. And your contractions are going to start getting worse. You don't want to, like, deal with that. And so finally, she convinced me. I paged the nurse. They came. And uh, before they were able to give me the epidural, they had to push a whole bag of IV fluids through me or something like that um, to keep my blood pressure even or something like that. Um, and... That took about 15 minutes, and during those 15 minutes, my contractions got so much worse. They were so painful. I had to like concentrate and breathe through them. Um, and so while I was waiting for the IV fluid to drain, I was like so thankful that I had called the nurses when I did and started the you know procedure to get the epidural when I did because. Um, if I would have waited any longer, I just would have been in so much more pain. I was almost kicking myself like I should have just started the epidural earlier and the call for it earlier, but it's in the past now. I was five and a half centimeters dilated when I got the epidural. And I felt pretty good about that because I was like, you know what? I made it past halfway because you make it to 10 and that's when you start pushing. So I was feeling really good about myself. I did not think I would go that far before needing an epidural. So they called the anesthesiologist in. She came. Um, it hurt when they pricked me. It felt like a bee sting. I did not like that. But I will tell you, the epidural is the best thing in the whole wide world. It took about five to 10 minutes for it to start like actually working and um, making it, you know, make my me all numb. But uh, once it did, I was totally numb. Like I could not feel anything. Um, and that's how I wanted it. I didn't want to feel any pain, any contractions at all. And they also give you like a little push thing. So if you feel like you need more, 
um, epidural, more numbness, and you can like push it, and it won't let you like go over your max or anything, but it'll give you more if you want more. So I really like that. So I got the epidural, and they just let me kind of sleep, uh, or try to sleep, um, and then they were gonna check me in a couple hours to see how the Pitocin worked. Um, every hour they were upping the Pitocin up a little bit more. I think they increased it by three every time. Um, so I tried to sleep. It was not easy for me to sleep because I was like, there were so many noises going on and I need like quiet for it to be, um, for me to be able to sleep. And the nurses were coming in all the time checking me. So I think that whole night I got maybe like 45 hours of sleep total. It was really bad. They had a chair. So like my mom would try and sleep in the chair. Um, Anthony was sleeping on the uh, pull out bed the futon and then they kind of would switch every so often because the chair obviously wasn't that comfy to sleep in I want to say at around like 8 a.m. or around there um, they came back and checked me again um, and it turns out that I had my bloody show and I was basically at 10 centimeters dilated and I was basically like ready to go um, which was crazy because I didn't feel any of that. I didn't even know I had started to bleed everywhere because everything was numb and I was in happy land. So it was kind of crazy once that started because then everybody was like running around like crazy like, oh my gosh, she's out of 10, blah, blah, blah. It was a little overwhelming for me because it, I just didn't expect my labor to go that fast and I didn't expect things to progress as fast as they did. And so I felt like I had just woken up and they were like, okay, it's almost time to push and I'm just like groggy and out of it and like I didn't even know what was going on. Um, and so um, they broke my water, but I think they were saying that like there wasn't that much um, water in, like uh, amniotic fluid uh, in the sack because he was so far along. Um, so not much came out. Um, and then they started getting ready for me to push. Um, my doctor was not there. She was um, at her office doing appointments, so they started to call her once I got closer um, for her to come and help deliver the baby. Um, my mom left the room because Anthony and I just wanted us two to be the ones in the room when the baby was born. We kind of wanted just that, those couple of minutes just as a family of three. Um, so she left and they got ready to start push to have me start pushing. So they got the stirrups up and they had these huge lights coming down from the ceiling, like illuminating my region down there, which was wonderful. Um, and I pushed for an hour um, and my little baby, I finally uh, announced the name. So we decided to name him Grayson Elliot Denzel. Um, he was born at 9.44 a.m. on April 11th, 2018. Um, he was 7 pounds, 15 ounces, and 20 inches long. So here are some pictures um, from that day. super numb the whole time so pushing wasn't too bad they had to tell me when I was having contractions um, because I couldn't feel them um, and yeah it, it took me about an hour to push I started pushing at around nine um, a little before nine so I was able to do it um, and I think I only got two stitches so I didn't tear too bad um, they did have to give me a shot in my leg because I was bleeding a little bit too much um, but I was super numb so they gave me my leg where I was already numb so it didn't even hurt so I was like bonus um, 
it was funny because my mom was telling me like make sure you get as much epidural as you can before they take it out um, and so I was pushing and um, they would have me like push for like uh, three consecutive 10 seconds like th basically 30 seconds in a row um, and then they would give me a break until my next contraction. So every time I got a break, I was pushing the epidural thing to try to get more epidural between each push. Um, and they didn't even tell me when they took it out. Um, but I assume it was like right after the, right after he was born. Um, but I didn't feel the stitches go in or anything like that. Um, I didn't even really see, um, any of the blood or anything. They offered to bring the mirror so I could watch him be born. I did not want to see any of that. I had already seen a couple of birth videos and that was enough for me. I did not need to see that. Um, they did, I did open my eyes once he came, like as he was coming out and he was not what I expected him, like not what I pictured him at all. Um, he has brown hair, not blonde hair. Um, and yeah, just his face, it just wasn't what I pictured, but I am in love with him I, I started crying immediately as soon as he was born um, he came out screaming he had a you know huge lungs on him and he was definitely breathing just fine because he was crying he was not happy to be out I felt so bad for him um, and he was hungry we after he was born they put me right on his right on my chest they were cleaning him off and then they went and weighed him and all that stuff and then they put him back on me and I started breastfeeding him and I breastfed for like an hour. He was so hungry um, and breastfeeding has been going great. Um, he, latch, he latches on really well and uh, my milk has been over plentiful. All of the nurses were super awesome the whole time of my hospital stay. Um, you know, you are in some vulnerable positions while giving birth. You know, everybody's staring right at your nether regions. And then the after, the postpartum, you know, the healing, they're always checking you and looking at you. And they were, the, all the nurses were super, super nice, super caring and nice. And I really enjoyed, you know, my hospital and all the nurses um, that help take care of me while I was recovering and also during the birth so yeah he breastfed uh, forever and I had my mom come back in uh, the room and she saw him um, Anthony's parents were in the waiting room waiting I didn't really want them to come in the room right away because I was still like my legs were up to, for the whole world to see and my boobs were out as I was breastfeeding. I was like, I just don't need my in-laws to see that image. So they came in a bit later. Everything was great. He was passing all of the tests that they were giving him, no problem. Um, and he was just the cutest thing ever. He was a little, like you can see from the pictures, he was a little like swollen and smooshed and like he had a little cone head and all that. Um, but he was like the cutest thing I've ever seen. Anthony was ecstatic. He was in love right away as soon as he saw Grayson. And um, he definitely looks like a Grayson, I think. Um, and so we were a happy family of three. Um, so I stayed in the hospital. Um, I had him on Wednesday and I got discharged on Friday. Um, and we had tons of visitors come. All of my siblings came to visit. Um, my parents came, Anthony's parents came, um, and my grandparents came as well. Uh, we also had a couple friends come and visit us. And everybody took turns holding him and taking pictures with him. And, um, all, you know, he was the first grandbaby on both sides. So it was new for everybody. All my siblings finally got promoted to aunts and uncles, and they were loving it. Um, being in the hospital was very hard for Anthony and I and Grayson. Um, it, we did not get hardly any sleep at all. Um, it's just hard because the nurses were constantly coming in. They had to check me, then they had to check Grayson. Um, he was cluster feeding, so he would feed like every 20 minutes. Um, I would finally, you know, I'd feed him and he would finally, you know, drift off to sleep and I couldn't get up because I was still recovering. So Anthony would come and pick him up and put him in the bassinet. And as soon as Anthony would put him in the bassinet, he would start crying and wake up immediately. Um, so it was very frustrating 
dating. Um, it was hard on my boobs um, because he was constantly feeding, so my nipples were starting to get like really raw. He was passing all of his tests. They did a hearing test and you know everything else. He was doing great on those. Um, we got him circumcised, so he went through all of that. He's healing great. Um, and no complications with that at all. Um, but we were just ready to be out of the hospital. Um, it was nice to be in there because there was a lactation specialist, so she helped me figure out a little bit more about latching and breastfeeding and just good holds for him. Um, especially since like my boobs were really hurting, I was just trying to figure out how to make it a little less painful for me. I was still recovering myself, so it was a lot of spending time in the bathroom and all of that care and clean up and things like that. Um, Anthony was a huge help. He changed every single diaper in the hospital because I did not want to get up. Um, and the only really good place we had to change him was in the bassinet, which was like elevated above my bed. So Anthony did every single diaper change. I was so impressed. Um, he would hand him to me. He supported me as I breastfed. He supported me during the delivery as well. He held up one of my legs. Um, he did not cut the cord, which I didn't think he would. So I actually ended up cutting it myself. I didn't even really know that was an option. Um, but they said that it was and so that's what I did. I cut it myself. They did offer it to Anthony. He just didn't want to and he declined. But he did actually watch Grayson come into the world, which I was shocked because I did not think that was gonna happen. I mean, Anthony's very squeamish and doesn't do very well with body fluids and blood and things like that. Um, but he watched the whole thing happen and I was shocked. Um, so he was definitely there. He was telling me, you know, push. He was encouraging me. He was awesome. And the whole time in the hospital, he was so encouraging. He even helped me, you know, get to the bathroom and he helped me clean myself, which I'm sure was not what he wanted to see either. Um, but he was so supportive of me. I don't know how single moms do it, um, because I leaned on him so much during that hospital stay. Um, and uh, he doesn't do the best when he ha has lack of sleep. He usually gets pretty grumpy, but he actually did a really good job, even though we were both like having lack of sleep. Um, he did a really good job of just staying calm and cool and um, just trying to support me as much as he could. Um, I was super emotional after my delivery. Um, constantly crying over everything um, and that was just you know the influx of the hormones and things like that we spent our time in the hospital it was fine but we were so happy to be discharged when we were um, they gave us a whole bunch of supplies which was awesome um, and they gave us you know a booklet to help like learn how to take care of the baby and our nurses were giving us advice and things like that. We got discharged on Friday in the afternoon and it was a warm sunny day. It was so nice outside. It was really windy too. So here are some pictures of the discharge. <laughs> Grayson was not happy to be leaving the hospital. He was just so cute and so tiny. When we put him in his car seat, he was just so incredibly tiny. Um, and so we made the drive from the hospital to our home and we got home. And this is the video of us introducing Grayson to Felix, our cat. Grayson coming home. Look at how cute he is. He's all asleep. Aww. He didn't sleep very much in the last two weeks. <laughs> two days. Two days. Feels like two weeks. <laughs> Mr. Pudgy Cheeks. Are you like serious? Him. Felix! Felix! Come meet your brother! Come here, B. 
breathe. Hey, what's here? Grayson, <laughs> you're home. Mow, mow. Alright. I'm gonna put him in the living room. I'm gonna start unpacking. Who's that? <laughs> oh, brothers! <laughs> now, if he's curious. What is that, Felix? This is really curious. Yeah, look. It's like this is a new smell. All right, you keep a watch on Grace, and I'll start bringing stuff in. Make sure Peep doesn't hop up in there. Yeah. So as you can see, Felix was not impressed with Grayson. Um, he, to this day, and like I said, I'm two weeks postpartum now, he avoids Grayson. He doesn't want anything to do with him. Sometimes he'll come up to Grayson and we'll sniff him, um, but um, other than that, he avoids him and leaves them be. <laughs> At least he doesn't hate him. <laughs> and I'm sure as Grayson gets older, um, he and Felix will become best buds. So the first night was rough. Um, Grayson woke up um, every hour to feed, um, so I really didn't get that much sleep. We did a lot of napping during the day the first couple days. Um, we had like blankets and pillows and everything in our family room we, we would just take naps whenever the baby was sleeping um but even though he was up every hour it was just so much nicer to be in our own bed we had a we have a halo bassinet swivel sleeper thing so it's like level with the bed um it was much easy to like get him in and out and things like that it's just so much nicer it's a much better setup so the first night was rough, the second night was pretty rough too, but as time has gone on, he's done much better at night. So um, he usually sleeps about three, three and a half hour stretches. Um, and so I'm only, have to getting, I'm only having to get up maybe two or three times at night instead of every hour, which is awesome. Um, one night he even did like a four and a half hour stretch and I was just like, what is this? I actually woke up uh, before he woke up freaking out and I had to like shine my light on him to see if he was still breathing because I was so nervous but he was fine I've gotten a better schedule and a better I've learned a lot of things um, in these past two weeks um, like I've learned when I get up in the middle of the night I should change him first and then feed him uh, one night I made the mistake of feeding him first and then I changed his diaper and he was wide awake and didn't want to go to sleep so I've learned that um, and he's actually a really really good baby um, he's pretty calm um, most 
like of the day and night. At night, we swaddle him um, and we have like our fan on to create white noise. Um, and he just sleeps and he wakes to feed. And then as soon as I finish feeding him, he conks out and I can put him right back in the hills. Uh, the halo bassinet and he goes right back to sleep so he does awesome there during the day he's awake maybe twice a day um, for an hour or two stretch um, the rest of it he just sleeps um, he's not colicky I don't think um, he does not cry unless it's a dirty diaper or because he's hungry so that's pretty easy um, it's made this transition and like this new phase of life so much easier on Anthony and I um, because he does not cry as much so we can handle it better. Me personally, how I've been doing, um, the first couple days were rough for me, so they put a lot of restrictions on me. Um, they didn't want me go. They only wanted me using the stairs like once a day, um, and they I couldn't drive for two weeks, um, and. Um, they really just wanted me to rest and I couldn't lift anything heavier than Grayson. So it put a lot of responsibility on Anthony. So he had to, you know, lift Grayson every time we put him in the car seat. Um, he had to unload the car. Um, if we went and got groceries and something was heavy, he would have to get them. Um, I couldn't lift like anything. And then the whole stairs thing, I could only use the stairs once. So if we forgot something that was upstairs, I couldn't go get it. Anthony had to go get it for me. Um, or our laundry room is in our basement. So I couldn't do laundry for two weeks. Anthony had to do it. And with a baby, um, like we used to only do our laundry once a week. Now with Grayson, he goes through outfits so fast, whether he's peeing on them, pooping on them, or spitting up. That that we have to do laundry like every other day so um, Anthony had to do a lot and then I was always feeding Grayson so like Anthony would make dinner for us thankfully we had really sweet friends and family who made us um, dinners that we could just heat up so we got like lasagna and enchiladas it was really really nice and helpful for us those first couple days I tried to take a lot of responsibility at night with Grayson um, I obviously Anthony couldn't really feed him we were not really wanting to introduce bottle or pacifier um, for the first three weeks they say to um, not do that to, because it'll cause nipple confusion um, and so we're trying not to uh, introduce bottles or uh, pacifiers until he turns three weeks so of course I had to do all of the feedings um, I was having a lot of hard um, times with my breasts um, my milk came in just fine and my boobs were rock hard and I had tons of milk and I have to wear yeah um, uh, breast pads all the time because I leak constantly um, and I had a lot of trouble of getting like good latches um, he would latch fine but sometimes it wasn't the best and then it would make my um, nipples really really sore and tender um, and so I have had to have a couple times of having to pump um, and then freeze my milk just because my um, it was just too sore for uh, Grayson to use. He's a very aggressive eater and so it's a little hard on my breasts when he feeds sometimes. Um, now that I'm uh, over two weeks postpartum, it's gotten a lot better. Um, I have learned to express, hand express a little bit and I put some of the breast milk on my nipple and then I also have lanolin that I put on as well and that seems to help. It still hurts um, right in the beginning when he first latches on. It goes away after the first initial latch. So I think I'm doing pretty good. I hope to keep breastfeeding him for as long as I can. My goal is at least six months. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm very excited to be able to introduce the bottle um, so that, you know, if I ever want a break or if I, you know, Anthony wants to do a feeding or if we just want to go somewhere and have somebody watch him, um, I can just pump and have somebody give him a bottle instead of him being attached to me all the time. So things on that end are going well with breastfeeding. Um, he's pretty good where he'll just feed and then he'll just, you know, stop when he's full. Um, I'll burp him. He isn't the best burper. Um, sometimes I'll try and burp him 
for you know several minutes and nothing will come out um, sometimes it's right away so it just kind of depends he doesn't spit up too much um, it's only been a couple times so that's been really good he has peed on Anthony and I several times um, he even peed on the nurse at the hospital it's just trying to and um, trying to get that quickness down and remembering to put something over him while we're changing him um, he has pooped on me as well um, and sometimes we catch it sometimes we don't we've had to do a lot of cleaning a lot of um, cleaning up after poops and pees and, and sped up and things like that but that's just what happens when you have a baby um, he did have a diaper rash um, about a week after he was born um, but we put some butt paste on him and it's cleared right up and we've bought sensitive wipes now and so I'm hoping like that'll help with everything um, it seems to have been it seems to be a lot better now it's cleared up um, but he's doing really really good um, we're all doing good uh, my emotions um, the first couple days actually let's I want to say like the first week um, postpartum I was a wreck emotionally um, the whole ride from the hospital to home uh, after we were discharged I cried the whole time um, just over silly things my and it was really just my emotions um, and then it it was so funny it was like clockwork every day once it got dark outside so like eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night I would just start crying um, over you know different things every time um, but now that I'm at two weeks um, I am much more put together emotionally and I don't cry at night anymore and I'm feeling better and more like myself um, I don't have any of you know depression symptoms that I think um, would be concerning um, I'm doing pretty good especially now that I got my sleep in um, I'm doing much better so yeah um, this is just kind of our new life with the baby um, we took him to uh, his first doctor's appointment and they weighed him and he was eight pounds three ounces um, when we just got discharged from the hospital he was seven pounds seven ounces so he gained a ton they were happy to see he passed his birth weight i was happy because obviously I, i'm solely breastfeeding him so his weight depends on me um, so i felt really good about that and he had grown half an inch um, so he's 20 and a half inches and the doctor looked him over and said he looked awesome and didn't see like any problems with him at all so um, we made another appointment for his one month doctor's appointment. Uh, so that's coming up in a couple weeks. We went and got his newborn pictures done. We had a lot of fun there. He did awesome. We were there for like three and a half hours and he slept the whole time. I did have to feed him about halfway through, um, but after I fed him, he just went right back to sleep. Um, and it was great. He did awesome. So everything's going good here. I love um, being a mom, I love having my baby here, um, and Anthony loves being a dad, and we just love being a family of three. Let me show you um, and introduce you to my little man.
Okay, guys, so that's all for now. Um, I'm sure I'll be posting more videos. Um, hopefully, you'll see less of me and more of the baby. Um, but thank you for sticking around my whole pregnancy. Um, I'm so excited to embark on this new stage of life and I'm now with a newborn and I'm excited to take you guys along with me. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for my next video. Bye guys.